जय हिंद एवरी वन आई एम अचिंत कुमार पांडे एज ए असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी एट अजय कुमार गर्ल इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट माई वीडियो लेक्चर ऑन कंट्रोल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ सी प्लस प्लस फंक्शन राइट सो बेसिकली हेयर वी विल डिस्कस डिफरेंट फंक्शन टाइप्स ऑफ फंक्शन एंड different types of basically function which is used in c++ and which support the concept of object oriented programming right okay so basically uh, what is functions uh, if we talking about c to c is a um, collection of function main is a function right and uh, uh, <coughs> the main is a function from where uh, execution is start right so everything we write into the function the function is basically self contained block of statement that perform coherent task of some kind okay so it is used to provide modularity to a program creating an application using function makes it easier to understand edit check error etc etc right so um, either we write everything every code into uh, main program i mean main function or we segment i mean we could make different module small module and we could write um, so many different uh, small small uh, uh, particular functionality into uh, uh, functions right so by creating functions um, we could do it easily right so there are uh, two category of function one is library function second one is user defined function library functions are those functions which are already defined they are defined in some kind of uh, header file um, like stdio.conio.hr uh like this right user defined function means we make user defined functions so you would have to uh, write the prototype declaration we would have to write the definition and we would have uh, call that functions okay so this is the syntax of the functions we would have to write uh, the mainly the definitions of function so we would have to write return type mean either int float or character then name of the function then we could pass the parameters right uh, there could be uh, there may be functions which do not have parameter right and this is the function body so basically function execute when we call that functions when we call that function the definition gets executed right so by making the call and how in uh, how we make the call just by writing the name of the function and the symbol of the function followed by semicolon then the definition gets executed right okay so function prototype is nothing but its declaration syntax where we would write, we would have to specifically mention the return type of function so that we could know that what is it, it it is returning or not if it is not returning anything then we would have to specifically mention void or it could be int float or character right then name of the function and the argument of the function if there are argument we would have to mention how many argument what type of argument and if it is not passing any argument then we, uh, we uh, could also do that right for example here uh, let's see we are going to uh, add two number using some function some here so just writing the overview of function here we have declared some function in which we have passed two argument x and y so this portion is called basically this one is the declaration portions by declaring compiler will be knowing that uh, these functions uh, we are going to use and uh, uh, <coughs> uh, this function is self returning integer and they are taking two argument which we are going to sum so here a and b we are passing even this a and b could be user defined so we could by c in our uh, is kind of right so this is the syntax this is basically calling the function since this sum function is returning integer so we would could store this return value into c right so when this will be called it will jump to the definition portion and it will return x plus y x is formal argument where it will copy the value of a and the b will be copied into y and finally return the sum okay so this is the way once the definition is over it will again return to the point from where it is called and finally it will print the c okay so this is how function gets executed okay so <coughs> 
by rewriting the code or we can uh, say by use of the function we have, uh, if we want to use some particular code at so many different places right so either we would write that much code into that places or we simply call that function so this could avoid the rewriting right so this is called declaring defining and calling the functions declaring means prototype declaration defining means its definition return time name of function arguments and we make the um, basically the code right uh, code whatever the code it is written into the definition and calling is just by how we how the get, the function gets executed how the function gets in works that's called calling okay now the uh, even calling a function this could be of two types one is called call by value and second one is called call by reference so if uh, we have already seen that the, the function could be of two types uh, uh, i mean a function could uh, could uh, would, uh, a function could have could take arguments it could not take arguments right so if it it is taking some argument so this argument could be it could be value or it could be even the address or you can sometimes call called by uh, reference okay so inside function we could pass the value value means either uh, direct constant or by simply variables right or even some expression itself right so function call how many uh, 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 how many types we could make the call so this could be of call by value call by reference so let's see with the example here suppose we have calci uh, so we are making the call by value uh, simply so what we are doing we are just passing the x so uh, cal means we are simply passing x means we are simply passing the value 10 so this type of call is called call by value okay so print a percent dx okay so what is x it will print x means 10 and uh, before 10 it will you know execute this cal c x so the control jump into the definition from here the point will go here and it will uh, you know x equal to x plus 10 mean and the value of x become 10 plus 10 that is 20 okay then again it will return here and this will print percent x so what will be the output so the output will be 20 right okay so this is called call by value we can simply pass the value as an argument like here it is when pass 10 okay and uh, we can modify this x as it become 20 and this one okay so call by value is uh, actually passing the actual variable so in this case the actual variable x is not changing because we pass argument by value right um, again uh, but we can change this program to modify the original x by making the function calc return value and storing this so here we could see the output is 20 okay so call by value is nothing simply passing the value of a variable uh, and if we are doing this then this type of call is called call by value next is call by reference in call by reference we are passing basically the address of the variable so let's if a variable for example x is 10 so variable is what variable is basically the name of um, name of memory space where constant value are stored so it will have uh, some location for example say let's say and the address of this uh, particular block in memory is 1000 so this is called the address and this address could be stored in some pointer right so for example let's this pointer are uh, could be p so we could store here 1000 so in pointer we could store the address like this okay okay so in call by reference basically we pass the address of the variable here see uh, the same example here uh, the variable x is 10 so we have passed the address of x means we have passed here for example uh, the if address it is 1000 so we have passed 1000 this 1000 that is the address it is address so uh, uh, it need a pointer to store that address so p will store the address p will have the value address now the meaning of a star p is value at p that is value at 1000 will be how much value at 1000 that is 10 and plus 10 so it will become 20 so 
star p becomes 20 and star p is nothing when value at p value at p means value at 1000 and value at 1000 equal to 20. So, when you print the x then it will print the 20 here. So, indirectly we could make change the actual value uh, of uh, <coughs> variables by passing the address right ok. So, these all are some kind of user defined function, uh, function with no argument and no return value, function with no argument and a return value, function with argument and no return value, function with argument and a return value, right. So, these are the some nature of some different nature of function. So, no argument passed and wrote no return value. For example, we are not passing and there is no return type means void. We uh, are making function. Uh, return type is a void, void means we are not passing, sorry, uh, the return type of function, the function is not returning anything and we are seeing in the prototype declaration itself, there is no argument being passed inside this function, right. For example, let us see uh, if we are going to uh, uh, making a program which checks whether a given number is a prime or not, uh, prime number or not, then by doing uh, particularly with this. Uh, mode uh, with the function which is not taking any argument ok. So, what we are doing let us understand one by one. So, we have made just a prime function we have called this functions. So, once we call we came to this point and uh, here some variable. So, uh, uh, it will ask it will print enter a positive in, uh, uh, in enter a positive in, uh, uh, integer to check for example, let us we have entered 5. So, it will come into num and from prime number is basically what? A number which is divisible itself or either by 1 that could be prime number. So, if it is not divisible by from 2 to less than number uh, 1, so uh, uh, it could be prime. If it is, then it could not be prime. So, that is what we are doing for i equal to 2, i less than or equal to num by 2 uh, plus plus i. So, if it is divisible means the number will not be prime and they will come out of that loop and it will print that this is not prime. If it is not so, then it will be prime. So, we have written break keyword here. Break keyword is um, keyword is when we want to come out suddenly, right. So, if it is not prime, okay, then it will si simply come out of the loop and it will print that this is a not prime, right. Otherwise, if it is prime, then we, it will continue check and like this all, okay. So, if it is not prime, okay, uh, then it will set the flag from 0 to 1. So, flag will become, uh, for example, let us see 5. So, if we divide 5 modulo 2, it will not divide, right. So, it will come here, either if flag, it will not divide, 5 modulo 2 it is not divisible, right. So, it will come here, I mean uh, again it will check then uh, increment the value of i that becomes 3, ok. Num by 2, num by 5 by 2 and 2.5 means 2, ok. So, it will simply come uh, if flag is whether equal to 1, it is not because flag it is not divisible. So, it will print it is a prime, ok. Category of function is inline functions. So, what is in C++ we make use of inline function. Inline function is basically uh, if the code is very small say one two line then we could make the function inline to reduce the cost of call right. So, calling a function generally causes a certain overhead like stacking argument jumps etc. And thus for a very short function it may be more efficient to simply insert the code of the function where it is called instead of performing the process of formally calling a function. Because when, when we uh, formally call a function it will take a considerable amount of time because just to evaluate all those argument um, control jump to the point from where it is called to the definition portion evaluating into the stack and finally returning to the point where it been called it will take a considerable amount of time. Somehow if the code gets simply replaced just like as a macro then these type of function become the inline function ok. So, inline function um, for example, here we have seen here like uh, <coughs> uh, inline int max. 
so if we write the qualifier in line so it will treat just like as um, uh, macro simply um, you know the definition uh, the macro being replaced with the uh, kind of is expansion okay so here we have made the function uh, max we are just checking the maximum between two numbers and this function has been made to inline function right so here we could see that uh, we have just written the definition here itself here we it, it, it been defined and returning if uh, either x or y uh, greater than it will return x or y depending on whatever it is greater right so inline function is another category or we can say just if uh, a function have uh, less number of lines less code then we could make the inline function to reduce the cost of call next is friend function in c++ we could make use of friend function friend function uh, is what for example uh, if we see uh, like uh, if you see the class the class could have only two things one is data second one is functions so the data is called member variable and the function is called member functions so in a class only member function is allowed to you know access that data and that member function of one class is not accessible uh, or you can say they, this particular member function cannot access the data of another class or another member variable of some different class okay so a member function cannot access the member variable of other member variable of other class or you can say the data of other other class but if somehow we could make uh, a situation where two class data could be you know um, shared i mean if it could be accessible then this type of category is called friend function so by utilizing friend function we may access more than one class right by making friend uh, of that class right so this is the case okay so to declare a function as a friend of a class precede the function prototype in the class definition with the keyword friend we would have to use the keyword friend for example here we have uh, <coughs> make the print width as a friend function and this could be uh, in general the friend function takes the object as a argument so here box is a class and we have made a object this one so generally friend function takes the object right and we could make uh, uh, you could uh, utilize the uh, friend functions right okay for example here we have made let's say here uh, class b class a so we are just going to define a class and here the data is a, a and here we have used a function a and again we are going to use some function add which is a friend function of two class a and b since we are declaring a and we are already we are also mentioning some different class b so that class must be known so this why we have written here class b and this um, declaration kind uh, this kind of declaration is called forward declaration because this function is going to friend of both class a and b so the forward declaration of class b would be necessary okay okay then we have defined the same class b so we could see that add function by the add function we could make access of um, this variable right so by making friend function uh, friend function has the capability to access more than one class data okay uh, rest is same in fact uh, uh, if we make a friend function or suppose this add function uh, is defined in a it will not be as a simple member function of this class a actually it doesn't belong to this class itself right the the function which is friend and it is defined into some class actually it is not the member function so since it is not the member function it could have access to uh, whatever we want and uh, um, other class it could be right so this is another important property of friend function a friend function if it is defined inside some class basically they do not belong to that class right actually they do not belong to that class uh, uh, this is simple c function and simply this 
uh, and since it becomes the simple C plus plus function, so like uh, simple C plus plus function, uh, how it gets involved, how it could be done like that, right? So there is no need to here you uh, classify the object of A and you could access by object of A like this. Simply, it could this particular add function or friend function can be accessed by you know calling that function like uh, um, normal C uh, or C plus function by uh, writing the name and followed by the argument right ok this is the property been here shown ok uh, the second category is called recursive function recursive function means this is another category recursion means um, it is a process uh, to define something in terms of itself so if a function call itself then this become um, the, uh, this type of function is called recursive function. For example, if you want to calculate the factorial value or Ackermann function or some kind of application where a function needs to call itself like factorial 5 could be written as a 5 into factorial 4. So, factorial call factorial. So, in that uh, we could make the function recursive. So, recursive function is nothing function call itself then this called uh, this uh, type of category is called recursive function right like here recurse call recurse right so this become the recursive call okay there is a you know here we have calculated the factorial of some uh, integer value and we have made call this factorial into itself by minimizing n into n minus 1 into the argument right so this is another way so we here we have discussed what is functions how it could modularize how it could make effective by writing some code into several different user defined function then we have seen uh, type of function and the argument which could be passed into the function that could be of call by value call by reference and so on and in addition to that we have seen the inline function as well as a front function so that's all about the function itself thank you